Hello again everybody and a very warm welcome back to the channel. If you're tuning in for the first time then very warm welcome to you. Please do hit like and subscribe down below. We're here in the wonderful Air 2000 Fenix A320 that's just been released for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And uh, I'm going to share with you guys some of the things that I've uh, found so far from a very brief experience that I want to share with you guys so you can decide whether or not to purchase it for your own sim experience. Keep an eye on the channel of course for lots of live streams covering this aircraft as well as we take it across the world in MSFS and as always share your thoughts in the comments below. First and foremost it's uh, an older version of an A320neo so a lot of this crosses over from the A32NX uh, in the sense that it's still the same aircraft type so you will get a lot of similarities between the two and you'll find yourself at home no doubt very quickly external model absolutely exquisite inside the Fenix program you're gonna get a selection of fantastic liveries from loads of airlines all around the world including uh, two Air 2000 liveries we're here at Birmingham in uh, the green painted one at the moment the green titled one And in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you guys how to set your throttles and also connect your sim brief up to. So, into the MCDU, you want to go to config. So, MCDU menu, config, controls config, and then using throttle uh, profile, custom throttle profile, we want to create our own. So we're going to hit the green button for calibrate and it's going to go into the calibration menu. So it's asking us to set thrust levers to max reverse. That's that. We're going to leave them in that position and we're going to go to next step. It wants idle reverse now. And we're going to work through this depending on what hardware you use, so I've got the Turtle Beach Velocity 1 flight into the climb gate, find which that's going to be flex, so out there find which setting works best for you effectively and there we go, once you're happy you can hit store, done Happy days. Turning our attention then to the EFB. The code, by the way, is 0000 at the moment if you do need to access it rather than press and hold the thumb pad. Um, and initially it's going to bring you up with this screen. Go to Phoenix. And in your Phoenix program, the exe file, which you might have to run if it doesn't, if none of this comes on to begin with. Um, what you want to do is log in using your Fenix username and password from their website and then it'll ask for your Hoppies login details and your Simbrief ID. Put both of those in, hit apply and when it's done and you've generated a route you can just click there. This is going to be a different route of course. This is, uh, what's this, Heathrow to Manchester. We're of course at Birmingham but you catch the drift and within it you can actually edit the scheduled time of departure as well. like so. And it'll tell you how far away from your on-time departure you are. Whether you're delayed, it will go into red as well. Very cool. Ground services tab then. Bit of a whistle-stop tour. Here you can select uh, your GPU, PCA, your stairs, chox cones as required. And you can open and close whichever doors are required too. And at the bottom on this section is where you connect your tug and you can conduct your pushback using the back arrow and the left and the right. Like so. Mass and balance is a cool one to watch. So it's pulled in our data from Simbrief at the moment and it's saying that we're going to want 162 on board, 3,971 kilos of fuel and planned fuel 4,978. So we'll have a load sheet sent to us. That's going to be inside the uh, MCDU where it says company message. That's what that's referring to. But what we can now do is we can load the aircraft you can choose instant, fast or real. If 
fight to choose fast for the time being, you're going to see the centre of gravity move around actively and you're going to see these weights change as well as the aeroplane gets loaded. At the end you'll see a pop-up saying boarding complete or loading complete and then uh, that's you done. The next tab takes you through two panel states. So cold and dark is what I've just set to default. If you want to choose a different uh, default setting you can just select one and then it'll ask you either do you want to activate it or do you want to set it as default. If I click set as default what it will then do is say actually would you also like to activate it now. So uh, you can choose which works for you again there and in the sim settings you can customize the aircraft based upon the livery use the airline settings so uh, you can set profiles for Air 2000 and then in here you can configure everything to how you would like it to work for yourselves and your own preferences as well uh, again airline modifiable information, having go around brake fans on or off cabin lights and visibility and your units as well so you can flick between meters and feet inches of mercury and hectopascals and kilos and pounds once you've loaded everything and you've got everything all set up you want to go to the departure performance tab this is where you're going to calculate your v-speeds effectively uh, and again we're still loading so we can do a preliminary load sheet and in here we can click echo golf bravo bravo and uh, we'll go with runway 13, uh, 33 for now live weather suggests the crosswind and then when we're happy we can hit calculate what it will do on the right hand side is it will give us our V speeds. You can change your uh, flap configuration if you want to, your force toga, whether your packs are on or not, uh, anti ice as well. And if you change any of the data, just recalculate it again. There we are. So it's suggesting flaps 1, flex of 60, and our V1 147 rotate, 147 V2 149. And uh, all of that will go into your performance page there when you get around to that stage of your pre-flight planning. If you want to fly an intersection departure you can just click here view intersection data and you can pick one so I know echo is routinely used we can select echo and it's going to recalculate our fee speeds and it's going to give us an even lower flex and the same goes for the arrival performance too. Navigraph you can link it up to a really nice UI actually the nicest I've seen so far within this Look at that, fantastic. So you can add it and you can bring up all your charts in the EFB. And your pilot brief will give you lots of handy information showing you your route from Simbrief. Of course this isn't going to be correct, we're not at London Heathrow, but for the purpose of the example you can just click drag, scroll through, you can get your weather briefing as well and pick up any NOTAMs that might be relevant. In this section at the bottom in documents you have your normal checklist which you can use to assist in your uh, pre-flight checks and everything else all the way through to parking and shutdown. And also the Fenix A320 user guide as well. So uh, if you do get stuck in flight and you think mm, actually I want to refer to something quick, check something then uh, that's how you do it. Happy days. If you want to use an iPad to connect this EFB to a different screen, you can use external device and it will give you all the instructions to connect that up on the external device as well. A really smart bit of kit and actually by far the most impressive EFB that I've seen in any flight sim so far. Textures wise, really nice, bearing in mind it's, a, it's supposed to be a much older aircraft. Um, I think they've absolutely nailed it with some of these textures, that one especially. Uh, I've looked at it multiple times and I find it very very nice indeed and uh, most of the controls and the dials and things have all got that slight weathered effect which look quite remarkable in the sim. One thing that I think is very cool is this analogue standby instrument. You pull it, it will level itself out with one of the most amazing animations I've seen. That's very cool. What about custom views? Well, all you've got to do is open the flight deck door and you can work down the cabin
to find a window wherever you'd like to set up your custom views. There's one for example and then it's whatever your keybind is. So in my case it'd be control and alt and then a number for me to set the custom view like so. And uh, yeah, nice and easy. While we're in the cabin, another neat feature is the smoking signs. You'll see at the moment smoking signs are illuminated in the cabin. Well actually if we go back into the flight deck and turn the seatbelt signs back on you now see seatbelt signs illuminated in the cabin as well. A very cool feature. Begin your uh, Simbrief route import. You want to go MCDU menu, ATSU, AOC, flight init and then init data request. And it will begin to pull in all of your data. And uh, this is very similar to the way the Flavawar A32NX works so it won't it won't be too alien to you at all and you'll be uh, started in no time I'm sure same with init request in the init A page too use the load sheet in the EFB to assist you in completing the uh, zero fuel weight and zero fuel weight central gravity fields at the top here uh, and then it will allow you to calculate the block fuel too and uh, don't forget to use that takeoff performance calculator there. To work out all of your V speeds too. So there we have it. Share which routes you're going to be flying in your Fenix A320. Now it's uh, been delivered into our sims. I hope you enjoy it. I'm looking forward to bringing you lots of great content using this aeroplane. Including some tutorials. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you very soon. Take care.